The DARPA Falcon Project is a two-part joint project between the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency and the United States Air Force and is part of Prompt Global Strike. One part of the program aims to develop a reusable, rapid-strike hypersonic weapon system, now retitled the Hypersonic Cruise Vehicle, and the other is for the development of a launch system capable of accelerating an HCV to cruise speeds, as well as launching small satellites into Earth orbit. This two-part program was announced in 2003 and continued into 2006. Black Swift was a project announced under the Falcon banner using a fighter-sized unmanned aircraft which would take off from a runway and accelerate to Mach 6 before completing its mission and landing again. The memo of understanding between DARPA and the USAF on Black Swift Euro also known as the HTV-3 ZA Euro was signed in September 2007. The Black Swift HTV-3X did not receive needed funding and was cancelled in October 2008. Current research under Falcon program is centered on X-41 Common Aero Vehicle, a common aerial platform for hypersonic ICBMs and cruise missiles, as well as civilian RLVs and DLVs. The prototype hypersonic technology vehicle 2 first flew on April 22, 2010. The second test flew August 11, 2011. Both flights ended prematurely. Design and development. Equals past projects equals, the aim was always to be able to deploy a craft from the continental United States, which could reach anywhere on the planet within one to two hours. The X-20 Dinosaur in 1957 was the first publicly acknowledged programmer Euro although this would have been launched vertically on a rocket and then glided back to Earth, as the space shuttle does, rather than taking off from a runway. Originally, the shuttle was envisaged as a part USAF operation, and separate military launch facilities were built at Vandenberg AFB at great cost, though never used. After the Open Dinosaur USAF program from 1957 to Euro 1963, space planes went black. In the mid-1960s, the CIA began work on a high-max B plane called Project Isinglass. This developed into Rainbury a design for a Mach 17 air-launched reconnaissance aircraft, which was later cancelled. According to Henry F. Cooper, who was the director of the Strategic Defense Initiative under President Reagan, spaceplane projects consumed $4 billion of funding in the 1970s, 1980s and 1990s. This does not include the 1950 and 1960 budgets for the Dinoso, Isinglass, Rainbury and any 21st century spaceplane project which might emerge under Falcon. He told the United States Congress in 2001 that all the United States had in return for those billions of dollars was one crashed vehicle, a hangar queen, some drop test articles and static displays. Falcon was allocated 170 million US dollars for budget year 2008. Equals Falcon equals the overall Falcon program announced in 2003 had two major components, a small launch vehicle for carrying payloads to orbit or launching the hypersonic weapons platform payload, and the hypersonic vehicle itself. Small launch vehicle, the DARPA Falcon solicitation in 2003 asked for bidders to do development work on proposed vehicles in a first phase of work, then one or more vendors would be selected to build and fly an actual launch vehicle. Companies which won first phase development contracts of $350,000 to $540,000 in November 2003 included Air Launch LLC, Reno, Nevada, Andrew Space Incorporated, Seattle, Washington, X Squadron Incorporated, Victorville, California, KT Engineering, Huntsville, Alabama, Lockheed Martin Corporation, New Orleans, Louisiana, Microcosm Incorporated, El Segundo, California, Orbital Sciences Corporation, Dulles, Virginia, Schaefer Corporation, Chelmsford, Massachusetts, Space Exploration Technologies, El Segundo, California. Hypersonic Weapon System The first phase of the hypersonic weapon system development was won by three bidders in 2003, each receiving a $1.2 to $1.5 million contract for hypersonic vehicle development, Andrew Space Incorporated, Seattle, WASH. Lockheed Martin Corporation, Lockheed Martin Aeronautics Company, Palmdale, Calif. Northrop Grumman Corporation, Air Combat Systems, El Segundo, 
Caliph. Lockheed Martin received the only Phase II HWS contract in 2004, to develop technologies further and reduce technology risk on the program. Follow-on hypersonic program. Following the Phase II contract, DARPA and the U.S. Air Force continued to develop the hypersonic vehicle platform. The program was to follow a set of flight tests with a series of hypersonic technology vehicles. The Falcon project includes X-41 Common Aero Vehicle, a common aerial platform for hypersonic ICBMs and cruise missiles, as well as civilian RLVs and DLVs. Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 1, a test concept, originally planned to fly in September 2007, now cancelled. Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2, first flew on April 22, 2010, but contact was lost soon after booster separation, HTV-3X. Black Swift, now cancelled, the hypersonic cruise vehicle would be able to fly 9,000 nautical miles in two hours with a payload of 12,000 pounds. It would fly at a high altitude and achieve speeds of up to Mach 20. Equals Black Swift equals, the Black Swift was a proposed aircraft capable of hypersonic flight designed by the Lockheed Martin Skunk Works, Boeing, and ATK. The USAF states that the Black Swift flight demonstration vehicle will be powered by a combination turbine engine and ramjet, an all-in-one power plant. The turbine engine accelerates the vehicle to around Mach 3 before the ramjet takes over and boosts the vehicle up to Mach 6. Dr. Stephen Walker, the deputy director of DARPA's Tactical Technology Office, will be coordinating the project. He told the USAF website. I will also be communicating to Lockheed Martin and Pratt and Whitney on how important it is that we get the technical plan in place. I'm trying to build the bridge at the beginning of the Programma Euro to get the communication path flowing. The Falcon program has announced the hypersonic horizontal takeoff Black Swift HTV-3X. It is also launching the HTV-2 off the top of a rocket booster. Falcon seems to be converging from two directions on the ultimate goal of producing a hypersonic aircraft which can take off and land from a runway in the USA, and be anywhere in the world in an hour or two. Falcon is methodically proceeding toward a hypersonic cruise vehicle. Dr. Walker stated, We need to fly some hypersonic v Laser Euro first the Expendables, then the Ras Ablizer Euro in order to prove to decision makers that this isn't just a Driama Euro we won't overcome the skepticism until we see some hypersonic vehicles flying. In October 2008 it was announced that HTV-3X or Black Swift did not receive needed funding in the fiscal year 2009 defense budget and had been cancelled. The hypersonic cruise vehicle program will continue with reduced funding. Flight Testing DARPA had two HTV-2s built for two flight tests in 2010 and 2011. The Minotaur IV light rocket is the booster for the HTV-2 with Vandenberg Air Force Base serving as the launch site. DARPA planned the flights to demonstrate thermal protection systems and aerodynamic control features. Test flights were supported by NASA, the Space and Missile Systems Center, Lockheed Martin, Sandia National Laboratories and the Air Force Research Laboratories Air Vehicles and Space Vehicles Directorates. The first HTV-2 flight was launched on April 22, 2010. The HTV-2 glider was to fly 4,800 miles across the Pacific to Quadraline at Mach 20. The launch was successful, but the first mission was not completed as planned. Reports stated that contact had been lost with the vehicle nine minutes into the mission. In mid-November, DARPA revealed that the test flight had ended when the computer autopilot had commanded flight termination. According to a DARPA spokesman, when the onboard system detects undesirable or unsafe flight behavior, it forces itself into a controlled roll and pitch over to descend directly into the ocean. Reviews found that the craft had begun to roll violently. A second flight was launched on August 11, 2011. The unmanned Falcon HTV-2 successfully separated from the booster and entered the mission's glide phase, but again lost contact with control about 9 minutes into its planned 30-minute Mach 20 glide flight. Initial reports indicated it purposely impacted the Pacific Ocean along its planned flight path as a safety precaution. 
some analysts thought that the second failure would result in an overhaul of the Falcon program. Refocus, in July 2013. DARPA decided it would not conduct a third flight test of the HTV-2 because enough data had been collected from the first two flights, and another test was not thought to provide any more usable data for the cost. The tests provided data on flight aerodynamics and high temperature effects on the NRA shell. Work on the HTV-2 would continue to summer 2014 to provide more study on hypersonic flight. The HTV-2 was the last active part of the Falcon program. DARPA has now changed its focus for the program from global strategic strike to high-speed tactical deployment to penetrate air defenses and hit targets quickly from a safe distance. See also, Boeing X-51, Prompt Global Strike, a follow-on military project, Rockwell X-30, Lockheed Martin Senior 72. References External links Falcon page on DARPA.mil, HCV page on globalsecurity.org, airdrops dummy rocket for DARPA's Falcon, Aviation Week, hypersonics back in the news on defensetech.org, going hypersonic, flying Falcon for defense, and Air Force plans flight tests of hypersonic vehicle on space.com, Pentagon has far-reaching defense spacecraft in works, Washington Post, March 16, 2005. U.S. Hypersonic Aircraft Project Space Changes Congress Urges Joint Technology Office, Flight International, May 30, 2006.